Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on the channel. Today we are setting up the month of May in my reading journal and if you're new here each month I am taking you to a different fantasy destination. If you want to check out the other destinations we've gone to in 2024 so far there is a playlist below and today we are setting up for the month of May so our fifth destination of the year is Thorn Manor and this is set in a world I think it's called Austin something I will put it on the screen um, and this is obviously from the series Sorcery of Thorns if you've been around for a while you will have known I've done a Sorcery of Thorns theme last year actually in January uh, since then I've read the sequel novella and obviously it's one of my favorite worlds so if I'm going to take you to a fantasy destination I better put that one on the list. This month I didn't do as well I think with the theme like aesthetics wise yes but setting it up I'm in mixed feelings. One I was really getting tired of using colors like green, brown, blues. It seems to be something I've done a lot this year and I wanted to incorporate other colors like purple and pink. Next month I will be doing a pink and blue theme so that's a hint for June but um, I really wanted to bring in different colors but I was a little bit stuck on what to do and I think that shows in the way that I set this up. So for now we're setting up the sneak peek page. I've got myself a cat. Uh, if you've read the book you'll know why there's a cat there. I've also gone and put a couple of books on there or grimoires. This one has padlocks on it. Again if you've read the book you'll understand why I've grabbed these pictures. I do come back to this and add one more element but we're already going on to the actual cover page. I used the this font here and just used a Crayola super tip to fill it in. I'm really happy with the color choice. Uh, I do go around it with a metallic pink pen. Uh, everything that I use will be listed in the description below so you can check out those supplies. Where I can I always list as much as I can down there and this is where I think it went a little bit pear shaped. I've been talking about how I want to do a bit more of a collage layout for the cover page because I am very much so a clean lines everything's in order type of person. I'm not very good at scrapbooking and collaging believe it or not despite doing this for since 2017. Uh, however I think what I needed for this page was more than just the white backdrop. So the photos are fine. Absolutely in love with all the aesthetic pictures that I managed to find for this theme. However I wish I had incorporated some more layers so different um, textures from decorative paper and stuff because it looks a little bland um, and kind of just sort of vomited onto the page um, and I do apologize that it did go off at the top of the screen there that you can't see what I'm doing so I do cut that footage out because there's no point um, leaving that in and then I decided to put borders around everything this month and I'm in two minds about whether or not I enjoyed that. On some pages I thought it really tied it together and on others I think it made it look a little messy but I was really flustered by this point on this cover page. I didn't know what more to add to it and I just kept adding until I felt like it was complete. It's not by any means the worst cover page I've ever done and it still very much so represents Thor Manor to me which is a very Victorian-esque type landscape. Um, however, I don't know, I'm just not 100% in love with this theme and how it turned out. We're now on to the monthly view page and again things on this page don't go to plan. I really wanted to use this um, vintage paper. It's called Heritage. It's a very old school um, little paper pack from uh, a department store here in New Zealand. I don't think you can get this brand anymore and I've had it for the longest time. I absolutely love the um, designs of this paper however I don't have a lot of it left and you'll get to see how I kind of push it all in together and make it work 
it's again it just I'm not 100% happy but at the same time I'm not unhappy enough to go fix it if that makes sense and um, I do really like these papers but I just wonder if I could have set it up in a better way you can see that I went over the header there with this one and I didn't know how to get it off so I just decided to add the header over top of the paper in person I can see it on camera I'm not sure if it's showing up as well but it, it is what it is um, I use this page here on the left to document down uh, when I start and finish a book and I don't know if I've left myself enough room down the bottom um, to write all the books that I read in May so let's hope that I have a cruisy month or I'll have to add in a tip and that will be no problem I did decide to go with a very pink and purple theme uh, I don't think pink or purple really represents this book so again I, I'm not sure if this theme is entirely cohesive but I'm happy enough with the colors as is I do like pink and purple together they they look really nice together and I don't normally use these two different shades so the lighter pink with the lighter purple and then this darker purple on top I don't tend to do that and I'm actually quite happy with how that came together on the right side is the arcs and book haul page and I started this off by actually using papers from the wrong set I before I start filming I always set everything aside for each page and you can see here I'm like uh, this is not working why is it not working because they're not for this page they're for the following page and um, so for this one I just had some moody photos to put up the top and then to just put in my headers I use this page a lot for information obviously all my setups in each month are functional more than aesthetically pleasing and uh, I needed the space so I've got a lot of arcs at the moment that I need to get through so I couldn't really go ahead and fill this up with more decorative elements so that is why it is quite basic and it does end up getting a bit more added to it like I mentioned before I kept going until I felt like I'd gone too far with a lot of these pages but I think this is really important to share and be transparent that sometimes the setups that you see other people do that you might like and they might not like or the other way around the, the creator might really like them and then other people might not I think it really uh, shows when um, you tell when you don't like things and it can put other people off but also I think it's really important that um, especially for newer uh, bullet journalers that they can see that sometimes things don't work out but we still can use the page because I have got some friends who would just go and glue the pages together and start again um, and that's fine but I don't have enough pages to do that and also I wasn't that put out the next two pages uh, tend to be for a readathon and my TBR for each month. So on the left hand side I am doing the Goober Readathon by Jashi Corrin and the Bujo Buddies Book Club. I will have that all linked in the description if you want to join us. This is just a bingo board readathon. It goes by points. I don't think there's groups or anything. I think you just play by yourself. But there is I think a Discord page. Again, I'll have everything linked below for the the announcement and everything like that it's being hosted by some of my really good friends so of course I'm going to participate it seems very straightforward you get points for each box and then if you complete an entire row you get five points so at the end of the month you just tally up those points and I think it's just a good way to have a bit of fun I did say I was participating in a readathon in April and if I'm really honest with you I haven't even looked at it so I haven't even set up a page for it so I think we'll just go back into doing readathons in May this one's really quite straightforward and quite simple to achieve so I'm gonna have a little fun with this I did do the color code as well you can see I have my phone off to the side there and it's telling me what I need to put on each box as well as which color goes where so green is representing three points dark brown represents two points and light brown represents one so that is why there's all these random dots in each box that is how I can tell how many points to add up at the end
I will probably add in a tip-in just to represent the books that I use for this. There are 25 prompts, so there's definitely not enough room down the bottom for any um, note-taking down there, but I probably will keep my scoring down there. I will definitely show you what it looks like uh, at the end of the month. And I did add in this decorative washi tape that I did get through a local um, stationery shop here in New Zealand. We'll have that also linked below. Um, if you're in New Zealand, their stuff is really great and the packaging is phenomenal. You'll get such a great treat. So onto the right side of the page, I have my TBR and prompts page. Again, I am not going to put a lot of decoration aside from what was meant to go on here, those three photos and the two moody pieces of decorative paper. Uh, I have added enough room for Tim on my TBR. I normally do eight, but the page looked really bare and I didn't want to try and fill in the middle with anything else. So I decided that I would do 10 um, books on my TBR. I have been reading quite a lot lately um, and I think that a larger TBR will be just fine. Um, I don't know what plans I have for reading for next month yet, aside from doing this readathon, but I think it'll be also good since it's right next to the readathon page that if there's any books that I want to add on to the TBR specifically for some of these prompts, that I have room to do so. I also have preemptively put down only five dots for the prompts of the TBR vending machine game. Uh, last month I had six, and oh sorry, I should say this month, and then I think the month beforehand I had seven, so there's a total of up to eight and I'm hopeful that I'll only have five in May. Just adding more of those borders on with the Jelly Roll pen, and then we are good to flip over to the next page, which I have brought back this month. Last month I did have um, this page sort of gone because I managed to consolidate everything onto those other two pages since I didn't have the readathon in that section. So this month something has, uh, I've changed it up just slightly. I've put events on this page, I've put audiobooks instead of audible, and I've put my library hires. So um, I have paused my audible at the moment, but I am reading a very great deal of audiobooks still. So I thought that I would use the extra space there to just mark down what ones I read. And then obviously it might get a bit repetitive to it because I do get them from my library. Um, but there's also been some other places that I've been borrowing from and I want to make sure that I document that down. And then we get back to the normal routine of having the first page of the reading log on the right side of this two page spread. Again, really liking these pinks and purples together. I really did appreciate how this portion of the theme came together. And I think it really works well with some of these brighter outdoor pieces because there is a garden at Thorn Manor in the sequel that you get to see. And that lightness is definitely back in the world in um, book two. So definitely wanted to add in a bit more of that. I also just think that after so many months of doing like more neutral colors, I had to go back to my heavy handed purple and pinks. I do have to admit that it's funny that I was so like, oh, I haven't done any purple this um, year so far in my journals when I have an everyday journal where I just keep other personal information to myself that I don't share online. And pretty much every single theme has been purple. So I was wondering how I've got halfway through setting this up and then I was like, hang on a minute, I've been doing purple a lot lately. So perhaps I'll try some other colors. Obviously I've already got my colors, like I mentioned at the start of this video, set up for June. It's a very specific color palette. I already know what I'm gonna do. June is my birthday month. I've had a theme in place for that for the longest time now. So I can't, can't change that, but perhaps I can do like yellows and golds for July. I think that will go really well with what we've chosen for July. My best, one of my best friends in the bookstagram world is helping me with all these themes each month. And um, I finalized the rest of the year. We've gone ahead and chosen each theme out and what it's going to be. So um, that's how I can kind of go while I know what colors might work for that specific theme. And I'm actually going to be organizing the entire one for July because um, my friend, I don't think she's read that book, sorry. Um, it'll be all on me, but she has got August to deal with. So I think it's August she's got. It's either August or September. So it's a fair trade. 
And we are now at the end of this sit up. I did speed up a lot of content. I also did some of the reading log off camera. My camera did die when I set up the rest of the monthly view. So here is how those papers came together. And I'm really happy even though I have had some critical thoughts about this theme. It's, like I said, it's not my favourite of the month, but I'm still happy with how it came together, and I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me today. Until we next meet, I hope you have fun reading or journaling, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.